Let's discuss three strategies that you have access to to help you deal with anxiety. We know that the conventional methods to reduce or manage anxiety are unsatisfactory. For instance, benzodiazepines, that is drugs that are sedatives. They make you sleepy, they reduce your attention span, make you uh, have fatigue, and they don't always work. So they may blunt the effect, but they don't really get at the root cause. Likewise, antidepressants are often prescribed. Antidepressants are a real problematic area of drugs. They have some really nasty side effects, including potent increased potential for suicide, sleepiness, and often simply just don't work very well. So let's talk about three microbial strategies you have. The first one is to make sure you restore this microbe I talk a lot about, Lactobacillus roteri. Recall that this is a microbial species that you should have had all along since birth because your mom gave it to you as you pass through the birth canal or during breastfeeding or just from contact. Well, as you know, a lot of babies are now delivered via C-section and don't have access to the vaginal microbiome or they're not breastfed or at least not breastfed for very long. And of course, people, both mothers and children, are exposed to multiple courses of antibiotics. And Lactobacillus roteri, ironically, despite being a critical, a very fundamental and keystone species in the gastrointestinal microbiome in humans, is also uniquely susceptible to common antibiotics. So an antibiotic of course you may have taken many years ago for say a urinary tract infection or an upper respiratory infection likely killed all the lactobacillus roteri in your gastrointestinal tract and whatever other organs it came to occupy. So the vast majority of people lack lactobacillus roteri, either it's present in very low numbers or simply not present at all. It is ubiquitous, you'll recall, in other mammals, in wild mammals. If we were to examine the microbiomes, say, of a moose, or a beaver, or a deer, they all have Lactobacillus roteri. If we were to examine the microbiomes of indigenous hunter-gatherer humans, unexposed to antibiotics, glyphosate, food additives, all the things we are exposed to, they all have Lactobacillus roteri also. So it's us as modern people exposed to all the factors that disrupt the composition of the gastrointestinal microbiome who have lost it and you can restore it. Now, restoration of roteri has numerous beneficial effects, but among the effects is an increase in the feeling of well-being and connection to other people. And that is one way to deal with anxiety because a lot of anxiety is social anxiety, right? Being anxious in dealing with other people, whether it's when you're shopping or at school or at work or driving or whatever setting, right? All the settings of life where you can have anxious moments. Well, the feelings generated by the restoration of roteri can help you deal with these feelings. You feel more close to other people, people like in your family or co-workers or neighbors or people in your community. You feel more connected. And that's one way to reduce this feeling of anxiety, but especially in social situations. Another way to deal with anxiety is to address SIBO. So recall that small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or we say SIBO, S-I-B-O, is now present in half the U.S. population. There's a whole rationale and, and evidence for why I say that, but about half the population now has SIBO. I think it might actually be worse than that. It's really ubiquitous. So all that means is all our exposures to antibiotics, glyphosate, food preservatives, ultra-processed foods, all the things we're exposed to have allowed the excessive proliferation of fecal microbial species in the colon. These are species like E. coli, Salmonella, Campylobacter. They've over-proliferated and then remarkably ascended into the 24 feet of small intestine, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Now, the small intestine is not well equipped to deal with trillions of fecal microbial species. They're very inflammatory to the small intestinal wall. Small intestine is very permeable to begin with because that's where we absorb nutrients. But now the presence of these fecal microbes further amplifies the permeability of the small intestine, 
When those microbes, trillions of them, die, they release their toxic compounds, but specifically something called lipopolysaccharide endotoxin, or just endotoxin, into the intestines and then into the bloodstream. And when that occurs, that's called endotoxemia. This is how microbes in the gastrointestinal tract can be experienced as something in the brain, like anxiety, or for that matter, dementia or Parkinson's disease, or in the skin as rosacea or psoriasis, or in joints as arthritis or fibromyalgia, or so many other processes, all blamed on SIBO and endotoxemia. So one way to reduce this phenomenon is to push back those invading fecal microbial species in the small intestine. And we've been doing it very successfully with something I call SIBO yogurt. And all that is, is we're going to take three microbial species, the lactobacillus rotari I mentioned earlier, so important, right? And lactobacillus gastri and bacillus subtilis. I chose those three. They're not random. I chose them because they colonize, or in the case of subtilis, germinate in the small intestine where SIBO occurs. And all three are champions at producing what are called bactericins, natural antibiotics effective in killing those fecal microbes. Now we ferment them as something that looks and smells like yogurt. It's not yogurt, at least not by the FDA's definition. It's a fermented dairy product, but it looks and smells like yogurt. So we're gonna ferment it using prolonged fermentation because we want really big microbial numbers. So for instance, Lactobacillus rotari doubles. That's how microbes reproduce. They don't have sex, right? They just double themselves. So Lactobacillus rotari doubles every three hours at human body temperature. So we're going to let it ferment or double 12 times over 36 hours. And that's how we get these really high microbial counts of hundreds of billions. If we were to ferment Lactobacillus rotari by itself, we get around 300 billion counts, billion with a B, per half cup serving, or 120 milliliters. Now, you have the choice of either individually fermenting each of those microbes, rotari, gasari, subtilis, or you can co-ferment them. We have had a lot of success with combined fermentation of all three, even though you get lower numbers because you have competition among those three. So choose your path. If you have really bad SIBO, maybe you should individually ferment each one and consume, say, a quarter, half cup each. If you don't have it really, really bad, maybe just go with the co-fermentation. I do ask that you start from scratch, that is from the probiotic starter, about every, I don't know, six to eight batches or so, because we don't know what happens to relative counts when you ferment and you make a future batch from a little of a prior batch. We have not yet done DNA sequencing to see if there's a relative shift in the numbers of microbes when you co-ferment and make future batches from little of the prior batch. One easy workaround, by the way, is to make each batch from a little of the first batch you made set aside in reserve. In other words, you make the first batch from whatever starter sources you use, right? And then save some of that first batch to make a second batch. When you finish the second batch, use more of the reserved first batch to make the third batch, you, the fourth batch, use more of the first batch to make the, right? On and on. That way you know you have some control over the relative counts of rotari, gastri, subtilis. In future, we will do DNA sequencing to see what happens at, the, let's say, sixth batch or tenth batch to see if one takes over, for instance. We just don't know. But this has worked extraordinarily well in normalizing SIBO. You can tell that by the way that certain symptoms recede, like sleep can be better, joint pain can be reduced. We use the AIR device often, that is A-I-R-E, to measure hydrogen gas in the breath. Or you can do, use formal H2 breath testing in a lab or clinic, and you can normalize breath hydrogen gas. Uh, we typically use a minimum of the SIBO yogurt for four weeks, much longer if you have serious SIBO. These are people who say things like, I took antibiotics for five years and have a lot of gastrointestinal problems. Those people have to take the SIBO yogurt for months. And it's a good idea also to con continue to consume it a few times a week, two, three times a week indefinitely, 
because the SIBO likes to come back and you get all the wonderful benefits of restoring those microbes, especially the rotorite. But when you, when you do this, you reduce the endotoxemia that drives anxiety. Okay, so this is a microbial solution for dealing with anxiety as well as many of the other health phenomena associated with endotoxemia, weight gain, abdominal fat expansion, high triglycerides, fatty liver, higher blood glucose, higher blood pressure, on and on. Numerous issues can recede when you manage the SIBO. The third way to deal with anxiety is the toughest of all. That is to deal with fungal overgrowth. That is overproliferation of fungal species, especially candida species, candida albicans, candida tropicalis, and some others in the colon and often that are allowed to, like SIBO, ascend into the small intestine. It's my opinion, but this needs better exploration, that it takes some measure of colonic dysbiosis or SIBO to allow CFO or fungal overgrowth. In other words, fungi overproliferate when the bacteria that were suppressing them have diminished in numbers or have distortions in composition with an overgrowth of fecal microbes. So I think the best solution is to deal with both SIBO and CFO, small intestinal fungal overgrowth. But CFO's tough. Fungi are very tough, and they're very good at generating resistance to numerous agents. And so if you're going to tackle fungal overgrowth, how do you know you have fungal overgrowth? That's a toughie. So the best way is to do a stool analysis. There's no air device. There's really no telltale sign like SIBO. With SIFO, there is this excess of sugar cravings. That could be kind of a telltale sign. Another maybe telltale sign of fungal overgrowth is if you have fungal overgrowth other parts of the body. So many people who have fungal overgrowth in the gastrointestinal tract will have fungal infections under the breasts, dandruff, pine the ears, fingernails, in the groin, toenails, sinuses. They'll have fungal overgrowth multiple sites, suggesting that it's being sourced or being seeded from the gastrointestinal tract. Now, that's the toughest of all, to deal with fungal overgrowth. So in my super gut book, I talked about several antifungal agents we use. My favorites are berberine, three or 400 milligrams once or twice per day. You can either get it as berberine or as a commercial product called candibactin BR. We do that once, ideally twice a day. And you can also combine it with essential oils. The problem with essential oils is they're very caustic. They burn. So you cannot take them directly. So we use food sourced essential oils like clove, cinnamon bark, or oregano, very dilute, like a couple of drops in a tablespoon of some edible oil, like avocado oil or extra virgin olive oil, uh, twice a day. But be careful. If it really bothers you, causes uh, abdominal upset, cut back. We build up over time to four or five drops per tablespoon. Uh, you can only do this for a few weeks because it is very caustic. It is very disruptive to the gastrointestinal microbiome. Now, if this kind of, you find this complicated, I invite you to join my conversations. This is all discussed, by the way, in my super gut book. A lot of this is discussed at length in my thousands of blog posts, williamdavismd.com. Of course, in my other YouTube videos. Or if you really need some guidance, some support, consider joining my inner circle dot drdavisinfinitehealth.com where we discuss these kinds of things and can often talk your way through these this process that may take weeks or even months to to solve.